In this video, I'm going to teach you how to use Elementor's Flexbox containers to create a beautiful full and split screen navigation. And yes, you heard me right. We'll do this with Elementor Pro and Flexbox. Hello, I'm your host Casino from Casino.com. I'm the Digital Alchemist. And in case you don't know what Flexbox is, let's just say that it's another way to create websites, but with more flexibility. Okay, let's first see what we need to complete this project. So I guess you can use pretty much any theme you want. Now, I recommend either Hello from Elementor or Astra, which I'll be using in this tutorial. Next, you need to install Elementor and Elementor Pro. Now, in case you don't have Elementor Pro yet, you find the link in the description below. Now, this link is an affiliate link, which means that I do get a commission if you purchase through my link, but I only recommend Elementor because I absolutely love it and recommend it to my friends. Plus, it gives a little kickback to the channel and that, my friend, helps me to keep on creating free content just for you. Okay, once you've installed Elementor and Elementor Pro, you wanna go to Elementor Settings, then you want to click on experiments. Then you want to scroll down and where you see Flexbox container, make sure it's set on active. Then go all the way to the bottom, click on save changes. And voila, now we are ready. Okay, now let's take a look at what we are going to build. So just to show you the previous version was this one with the black and the red. Okay, and now is the new versions, almost exactly the same one, but just to differentiate, just so that you sure you're following the right tutorial. When I click on the navigation, as you can see, it's now blue and red. Okay, but now for the feature, as you can see, when I click on the menu icon, we have a split screen. So once again, one side goes down, the other side goes up, and then I can close and it goes, it slides back up. Now, of course, it works on the tablet. So if I click on the navigation, as you can see, it's beautiful, but it's a bit different because instead of left and right, it's top and bottom. And of course, it works on the mobile too. So as you can see, and the same goes top and bottom. Okay, now we can start creating our pop-up. So in WordPress, you want to go to templates, pop-ups, and then click on add new. And I'm just going to call it pop-up flexbox split. Click on create template. Okay, and we don't want to use any predefined templates. So let me close this. So first of all, you want to click on the plus sign and then you want to choose this structure with two containers. Actually, it's two containers within one container. So let me show you in the navigator. And in case you don't know, you can just toggle the navigator on or off by clicking on the navigator icon, or you can use command plus I on a Mac or control plus I on a PC. Okay, so now I'm just going to open the container. And as you can see, we got two containers within one container. So the first thing I want to do, I'm just going to rename it. So I double click and then this one is going to be main container. And then that's going to be container one. And this one is going to be container two. Okay, but we'll take care about our main container and our containers a little bit later. But first we want to open the pop-up settings. So for that, you want to go to the bottom left corner of the window and click on the gear icon. So let me click. Okay, so let me zoom in a little bit. So for the width, you want to click on VW and you want to type 100. Next for the height, we're going to keep fit to content. Next for the position horizontally and vertically, it's in the center. We want to toggle the overlay off. Close button should be on. And for the entrance animation, we want only an exit animation and we want the slide out up. And for the animation duration, it's going to be 0, 0,3. Next, let's go to the style tab. The background type should be classic. And I'm going to click here and I'm just going to drag the opacity slider all the way to the left so that it's completely transparent. Okay, now I can go to the close button sub tab. The position should be inside. And for the vertical position, click on pixels and it's going to be 30 pixels. Now let's go responsive. On the tablet, it's gonna be 30 pixels, so it's the same, but on mobile, it's going to be 20. Okay, let's go back to desktop mode. And don't worry if you can't see the whole picture. Let me zoom back out. You can't really see anything right now because we haven't started working on the containers yet. So let me zoom back in. And let's do the same for the horizontal position. So click on pixels, 30 on the desktop, and it's going to be 20 on the mobile. And it stays 30 on the tablet. So let's go back to desktop mode. 
Next, the color should be set to white and the size to 25 pixels. Okay, so we're done for the pop-up settings part. Now let's click on the main container in our navigator. And with our main container selected, we can start editing the settings. So the content width should be set to full width. Now the width should be set to 100 VW. So click on VW, then 100. And the same for the minimum height, VH 100. Next, scroll down to the items sub tab and make sure the direction is set to row. Let's scroll back up. Let's click on the style tab, background type, select classic, click on the color. And right here, you wanna drag the opacity slider all the way to the left to make it transparent. Okay, next you wanna select container one and then on the layout tab, the content width should be full width. Now for the width, you wanna click on VW and then I'm just going to type 60, then go into responsive mode. And for the tablet is going to be 100 and the same for the mobile, but it's gonna pick up the number from the tablet. So we can go back to desktop mode and now for the minimum height, you wanna click on VH, give it a value of 100, then go into responsive mode, tablet mode, and I'm going to type 50. And it's going to be the same thing for the mobile 50. So we can go back to the desktop mode. Next, click on the items sub tab, make sure the direction is set to column. And then where it says align items, you wanna select stretch. Next, where it says justify content, you wanna select center. Next, you want to click on the style tab and for the background, select classic and pick your favorite color. I'm going to use my color here. It's a dark blue. Next, you want to click on advanced and where it says padding, you want to give 60 pixels all around, then go into tablet mode. And this time it's going to be 40 pixels all around and then into mobile mode. And here I'm going to unlink the values and this time it's going to be 40 20 on the right, 40 at the bottom, and 20 on the left-hand side. Okay, let's go back into desktop mode. And now let's scroll down to where it says motion effects. And where it says entrance animation, you wanna select sliding down. And for the animation duration, you wanna select fast. Okay, we've done a lot so far, so let's save our work. So the first time you need to click on publish, it's gonna ask you to add a condition. By default, it says include on the entire website, Click on next, next, save and close. Okay, so now we're sure we're not gonna lose our work if anything happens. Okay, next with our navigator open, we want to select our container two. Then for the settings, the content which be full width. Now for the width, click on VW and type 40. Then let's go back into responsive tablet mode and it's going to be 100 and the same for the mobile. So let's go back to desktop mode and for the height you want to click on vh type 100 then you want to go into tablet mode and it's going to be 50 vh for the tablet and for the mobile so we can go back on the desktop and next click on the items sub tab and where it says direction make sure it's set on column then for the align items pick center and where it says justify content you want to select space between okay Next, click on the style tab. Background type should be classic and pick your other favorite color. I'm going to pick this red. Next, click on advanced and where it says padding is going to be 60 pixels all around for the desktop. Now let's go into responsive tablet mode. It's going to be 40 pixels. And then once again, let's go into mobile mode. And this time we want to unlink the values and it's going to be 40 on top, 20 on the right, 40 at the bottom, and 20 pixels on the left-hand side. Okay, let me zoom back out, and let's go back into desktop mode, and then open the motion effects sub-tab, where it says entrance animation. You wanna type slide, and we're going to select slide in up. And once again, we wanna change the animation duration to fast. Okay, let's click on update. And now we can start adding some widgets. So click on the widgets icon and I'm gonna type nav menu and I'm just gonna drag it here in the middle of container one. Then where it says menu, I'm going to pick my menu, which is how I named my menu. Very original, I know. 
So where it says layout, I'm going to select drop down. The alignment should be set to center and the toggle button should be set to none. Okay, let me zoom back out. Let's click on the style tab. So for the text color, I'm going to select white. And for the background, I'm gonna drag the opacity slider on the left so that the background is transparent. Next, you wanna click on the hover tab. And this time the color is going to be red in my case and the background color once again, I'm gonna drag the opacity all the way to zero and the same for the active tab. So it's going to be red and the background should be transparent. So now I wanna hover over the elements. As you can see, it works beautifully. Next, you wanna click on typography. As you can see, I'm using the Poppins font and the size on desktop is going to be 99. Now it looks really weird, but don't worry. <laughs> We're gonna fix that. So first of all, let's go into tablet mode. This time it's going to be 50. And on the mobile, it's going to be 30 pixels. Okay, let me close this. And let me go back into desktop mode. So still with our nav menu selected, I'm gonna scroll down to where it says vertical padding. And I'm going to type 50 pixels on the desktop. Then let's go into tablet mode. This time it's going to be 40 pixels. And then let's go into mobile mode. And this time it's going to be 20 pixels. Okay, so it's looking good here, but as you saw here on the tablet, it doesn't look right. It should be top and bottom instead of left and right for the containers. So it seems like we forgot something. So let me go back and click on the main container. Then on the layout tab, I'm going to click on the items sub tab. And here, actually the direction, instead of row, it should be set to column. Okay, so now it's looking good. And if I go back into desktop mode, it's set to row. And if I switch back to tablet, now it's set to column. So make sure you don't forget to do this. Okay, once you're done, click on update. Okay, next let's go back into desktop mode. And now I can add some elements in the container number two. So for that, I'm going to click on the widgets icon. And first of all, I'm going to drag an image widget in container number two. Then once again, widgets icon. And this time I'm going to look for a list icon. So I'm just drag it just below the image. And next, once again, widgets icon. And this time I'm going to be looking for a button and I'm gonna drag it in the container number two. And I'm just going to reorganize elements so that the button is at the very bottom. Okay, and now I can start studying the various elements. So for the image, I'm just going to click on image and I'm going to pick my logo, click on insert media, and then I can start playing with the styles of each widget. Okay, and there you go. Now, I didn't want to waste time on these because probably yours is going to be different. And the idea here is that you can just start playing with the styling and make it look as you wish. Okay, now, very important. If the widgets don't look like this in container number two, and by that I mean they don't look evenly spaced, you want to go to the container number two. So here in the navigator, I select container number two. Then you want to go to layout, and then you want to click on the items sub tab. And now you want to make sure you click on space between, because by default, it might be at flex start. So make sure you click on space between. Okay, let's save our work. Well done. Now let's create our header. So for that, in WordPress, you wanna to go to Templates, Theme Builder. Okay, and next you wanna click on Header. And I'm just going to click on the plus sign. Okay, we don't want any predefined templates, so let me close this. Let's click on the plus sign. And let's pick once again the structure with the two containers within one container. Okay, so let me open this here in the navigator. And if I open it, as you can see, we got two containers within one container. So let me double click and I'm going to call it main container. And then the first one is going to be container left. And the second is going to be container right. Okay, so first of all, let's select our main container. And then you want to go to style and then background type classic. And initially we want to give it a dark color. So I'm going to pick this color. We're going to remove it at the end because we want it to be transparent in this case. But just so that we can see what we're doing, I'm picking a dark color. Okay, so let's go back to the layout tab. So the content width should be set to full width. Now where it says width, you wanna click on VW and type 100. 
and where it says minimum height, you want to select pixels and give it 100 pixels. So make sure you get this right. The width is set in VW 100 and the height is set in pixels 100. Okay, next let's scroll down to the items sub tab and make sure the direction is set to row. Okay, let me zoom back out. Let's click on the advanced tab and where it says margin, you want to unlink the values and then I'm going to type 100. Then I go all the way at the beginning and type the minus sign because if you start by typing minus, it's not going to work. So you need to do first type 100 and then add the minus sign in front. Time out. So I'm currently editing this video and I just realized I made a big mistake. So let me show you. So within the main container of our pop-up, so let me show you if I zoom in, I told you to put minus 100 as the top margin, whereas it should be zero. And it's the bottom margin that should be minus 100. So I just wanted to keep that in mind throughout the tutorial, but don't worry because I'll come back to it later when I actually realize I made a mistake. So all is going to be okay. And while we're at it, if you want to be sure that your header is really going to be on top of everything, where it says Z index, make sure you add a Z index of 1000 and then save your work. Okay, with that out of the way, let's go back. And what this is going to do is going to shift the content up because remember in the original demo, we want the top header to be transparent. So as I scroll, as you can see, it's still there, but it's transparent. So we need to shift the content up. Okay, let's go back. And now you want to select container left and where it says layout, you want it to be full width. The width should be set to VW. Make sure you type 50 and let's go into responsive mobile mode. And in mobile mode, you want it to be 60. So let's go back to desktop mode and let's scroll down to the items sub tab. Make sure the direction is set to column. Align items should be set to flex start and justify content should be set to center. Let's scroll back up and let's go to the advanced tab. And for the padding, I'm going to unlink the values and it's going to be 20. 20 on the right hand side, 20 at the bottom and 30 pixels on the left hand side. Next, we want to go into mobile mode and link the values. And this time it's going to be 10, 20, 10, 20. And we're talking about pixels, of course. Okay, let me zoom back out and let's pick our container right. And let's go back into desktop mode. Let's go to the layout tab and where it says content width, it should be set to full width. Now the width should be set to VW and the value should be 50. Now let's go into mobile responsive mode and still with VW selected, this time it's going to be 40. So let's go back into desktop mode and next let's click on the items sub tab. Now for the direction, make sure it's set on column. The align items should be set to flex end and justify content should be set to center. Now let's scroll back up, click on advanced Unlink the padding values and it's going to be 20, 30, 20 and 20 pixels. Now let's go into mobile responsive mode, unlink the values. This time it's going to be 10, 20, 10, 20 pixels. Let's zoom back out and let's go back into desktop mode. Okay, now we can start adding our content, but as you can see, we can't really see the top here because we gave the main container a negative value. So let's go back to our main container and just temporarily, I'm just going to go back to zero so that we can see everything. And just before we publish, we'll put it back at minus 100. Okay, so click on the widgets icon and I'm just going to drag an image and I'm going to pick an image in my library. And it's going to be this one. So click on insert media. Now let's go to the style tab and where it says width, you wanna click on pixels. And in my case, it's gonna be 200 pixels, but of course, depending on your logo, you should play with those values. Next, I'm gonna go into tablet mode. It's going to be 140 pixels in my case. And mobile mode is going to be 120 pixels. Okay, let's go back into desktop mode. Let's click on the widgets icon and I'm gonna type icon. And I'm just gonna drag an icon in the second column. Now let's click on the icon. I'm going to type grip for grip lines. I'm going to pick this one, click on insert and where it says link, I'm going to click on the dynamic tags icon, then scroll all the way to where it says pop up. 
and then I'm going to click on the wrench icon and where it says all, I'm going to start typing the name of my pop-up. I know there was split in the pop-up name, so there it is. Okay, let me close this. Now let's go to style and for the color, I'm going to select white. Okay, we're almost done, almost ready to publish. But before we do that, a couple of things we want to do. So let's select our main container, then go to advanced, type 100, then go all the way to the front, then type the minus sign. And as you can see, we shifted the content back up. And then because we want this to be transparent, you want to click on the style tab and where it says background type color, you want to drag the opacity slider all the way to the left so that it's transparent. Okay, next you want to click on publish. It's going to ask you to add a condition, click add condition. And we want to include this on the entire website. So click save and close. Okay, now let's take a look at what we've built. Okay, so this is what we currently have and I'm going to hit refresh. Okay, the header does not appear. So something seems to be off. So let's fix it. Okay, so back in Elementor, first of all, you want to make sure that you have the main container selected. Then you want to go to the advanced tab and here where it says margin, you want to remove the minus 100 and type zero. And then where it says bottom, you're going to type 100 go to the front and type minus and that was the main mistake it was here at the bottom that it was supposed to be and not in the top margin okay one more thing so let's scroll down and here where it says z index you want to type 1000 okay let's zoom back out and now click on update okay fingers crossed okay now let's refresh our page and voila, now it works beautifully. And if I click on the hamburger icon, as you can see, it's looking beautiful. So let's do it one more time. Great. Okay, now let's take a look at the tablet version. And as you can see, it's working great. And last but not least, let's take a look at the mobile version. So let's click on the hamburger icon. And once again, looking beautiful. Well done. Now, if you enjoyed the tutorial and appreciate the hard work, you can always super thank me or you could just give me a thumbs up because that really helps the channel and it's free. And if you want more web design goodness coming your way, make sure you subscribe and smash the notification bell so that you don't miss anything. Now, if you're wondering how I come up with beautiful design, well, let's just say that I always start with brand guidelines. Now, I created the free brand guidelines templates that you can download on my website for free. Initially, it was made for Affinity Designer, but you can use it with Adobe Illustrator with a workaround. So if you are interested, just go to casina.com forward slash branding and follow the instructions on screen. Now question, are you using Flexbox with Elementor on all of your new projects? Or are you using the legacy sections and columns? Please let me know in the comments because I'm curious. Now, if you'd like me to convert more of my previous tutorials to the Flexbox model within Elementor, please let me know in the comments. I'll see you in the next one. And don't forget, I'm trying to build the content I wish I had when I got started. So I'll see you in the next one. And until then, take care and stay safe.